Yeah, 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 one test, yes. Oh, yes. We are going to start, this is practice test one. We're going to start at the bottom because I didn't quite get through it with the other class. So they only have the first part video. So we'll video the second part now. Um, so what I'm telling you, I guess, is if we don't get through the whole thing, practice test one is available on video. Okay, you can see it on there it's from yesterday. All right, but we're gonna start with number five. When you do this on your separate paper, you're free to go in, out of order. So we're gonna five, four, three, that's the way we're gonna do it. You're free to do that on your paper. Please do this on separate paper. F of X is two X squared plus one. G of X is three X minus four. Problem number one, F of two plus G of negative three. This is the one we are not missing. This is so simple. What's F of two? <coughs> Be careful. We square first. What's two squared? Four times two is eight plus one is nine. Make sure you're doing that in the right order. Remember PEMDAS, exponents come first. All right, now g of negative three. Put negative three in here, what do you get? Negative 13. So the answer to the problem is nine plus negative 13, negative four. All right, B, what's f of x minus g of x? f of x minus g of x would be 2x squared plus 1 minus 3x minus 4. And I'm going to be careful when I simplify that I distribute my negative, right? So 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. That's your answer. Stop. Don't do anything else. Don't do anything to that. You are done. Don't get carried away. We talked about this a little bit ago. Right? What do we do? Plug three, Plug three into G. All right, so what do I get when I plug 3 into G? 5. So G of 3, this is 5. That equals 5. So I'm finding F of 5. I put 3 in here like it said. It says find G of 3. So I put 3 into G, and I got 5. And F, now I do F of 5. So remember, when you do F of 5, you're going to square first. So that would be 25 times 2, 50 plus 1. So your answer is 51. Is that good with everybody? All right. Um, what's last? Last, I have G of F of X. Okay, this is what we talked about on our quiz. What is f of x? What does f of x equal? 2x squared plus 1. So I'm finding g of 2x squared plus 1. In other words, I am plugging f into g. So this is going to get plugged into g. So I have 3 times 2x squared plus 1 minus 4. I'm plugging f into g. So that's 6x squared plus 3 minus 4. 6x squared minus 1 is your final answer. Everybody okay with that? Now I'm going to number four, which is all of the sketches. This time the very first sketch is the piecewise function. All right, so my equations. Top 
top one look like? That top equation. It's a line whose y-intercept is 1 and whose slope is, what's the slope here? 2 over 1. So I'm going to go up 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1. So here is that line, the whole line. Now, where am I going to put my dot? Once we get our picture drawn, we always put a dot somewhere. Where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it where x equals 2. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put a closed dot on my curve where x equals 2. See, this is where x equals 2. So I just follow it up and put a dot on the curve. Then I'm going to erase. What am I erasing? The left. So all this is erased. <clears throat> all right? Yep. Oh, it is. Thank you, Samantha. That circle is supposed to be open. What do, you, what do the rest of you think? Would you agree with her? Yes. Yes, it is supposed to be open. That is not an or equal to. Thank you. All right. What's next? Absolute value. So I'm going to draw my V, my handy dandy V. And I'm going to put a dot on it, too, where x equals 2. And this time I will close it in. Is that okay? And what part of the V am I erasing? The right. The right. I'm getting rid of the right. Remember when you do a piecewise function, you should always erase opposite sides. So if you erase the right side on part one, then you want to erase the left side on part two. You should never have them stacked on top of each other. You don't want to have two pieces on top of each other, ever. We're done. Well, with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. V says y equals, sketch this. Now, the piecewise function is going to take you a while. These other sketches should not take you very long. What shape is V? Oh, it's got a parabola. This guy is a V, right? Absolute value, V. Now, what about the V? It's to the right three. So that's all you have to do. That should not take you very long. If you know the rules, we should be able to bing, bing, bing. Now C is your sine curve. And that's one that you're not as comfortable with. I understand that. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch in my sine curve. I'll do it dashed, because that's the original. That's the original sine curve. Would you agree with me? Yeah. Yep, going through the org. Yeah. Now, what am I doing to it in this problem? It says sine x minus 1. What is happening to that dotted line? It's going down 1. So every point is coming down 1 unit. every point down one unit. And there is my sine curve. Just simply cut it out and pasted it down one space. one 
and two and <coughs> down two. So left one and down two. Here's my parabola. Negative one, negative two is my group vector. Left one, down two. Take a look at E. Do you remember what E looks like normally? It squiggles through the origin. Now, what's happening to this problem? It is getting moved up one. So instead of squiggling through the origin, it's going to squiggle through this point right here. So you're going to draw your regular little cubic function but you've got it squiggling through that point right there. All right, F. What shape is F? It's a different shape than we've looked at here. What, what shape is it? It's that earth thing, right? So what's happening in this problem? Normally we'd arc through here like this, right? <coughs> what are we doing here? What's happening? Three to the right and up two. two. So three to the right and up two. So it's going to be out here, and this is the point 3, 2. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, you probably should for ones like this that are starting in a different place other than the origin. All right, now we have part 3. Remember, we're working our way from the bottom up. And part 3 is this asymptote holes thing. All right, so A, we have horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, and holes. Okay, for part A, look at it. Can you give me any of those for problem A? Maddie, are you saying something to me? The vertical asymptote is x equals negative 1. You're exactly right. And how did she know that? Negative, yeah, she's smart, but negative one makes the denominator zero. You all need to be smart in that regard. We talked about it. Vertical asymptotes. What makes the denominator zero? All right, what else do we know? Y equals three. She is exactly right. Kids, look at your problem. Do you have the same power on top as you have on the bottom? Yes. So your horizontal asymptote is 3 over 1. 3x over 1x. 3 over 1. How about holes? None. None. That's the easy one. Nothing cancels, so you don't have any holes. All right, let's look no at holes. What? No holes. So let's look at B x plus 2, x minus 2, over x plus 5. Vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, holes. Here we go. What have we got? x equals negative 5 for my vertical asymptote. You're not going to miss that because there's the x right there with the 5. x equals negative 5. What? Somebody's saying something, but I can't hear it. There's no horizontal, Colleen. You are exactly right. There's no horizontal because why? 
the biggest power is on the top. The top has a bigger power than the bottom. That means no horizontal. How about holes? None. The only way you can have a hole is if you cancel. If you do not cancel, you do not have a hole. And the last one. By now, we should know we start the problem by factoring. So we do whatever factoring we can do. So I took a three out on top. And then I could factor that, <clears throat> which I did. We okay? see a cancel? What does that mean that I could cancel something out? It means I'm going to have a hole. Now I know that some of you are getting tired of listening to my beautiful voice, but I'm doing your homework for you. So let's try to hang in there, right? Otherwise, you're on your own. Okay, tell me about my hole. Remember, we have one if it cancels. Where will this hole be? At positive three. It's at positive three because that's what I canceled out. Okay, now, what do I do with the three? I put it right here. So I'll have three times six over two. I'm putting in three so that I can get my y coordinate. So what's it gonna be, 18 over two, nine? All right, let's look at our problem now. Do I have any asymptotes? I have a vertical asymptote at x equals one because that's what makes the denominator zero. And do I have a horizontal asymptote? I do, and it would be what? Y equals three. There you go, you're getting the hang of it. If the powers match, just make a fraction out of it. We're almost done. We're going to get this thing done. We're, we need more on here. All right, number two, find the implicit functions. All right, what does that mean I do again? I got to get y by itself. So I can move x squared over. Then I have to divide by negative 1. So I have y squared equals negative 9 plus x squared. If you wanted to, could you turn this around and make it x squared minus 9? If yeah. you wanted to. Yeah. You don't have to. It doesn't make a single bit of difference. Either way is fine. What do you do next? Take the square root. And when I take the square root, it will be plus or minus. And I know x squared is a square and 9 is a square, but you're not doing anything with that because of the negative sign there, the minus sign. This is the end. This is where we stop. Forget the plus or minus, you lose half credit. So remember the plus or minus. You need two answers. Now we have our domain questions, and then we'll be all done. I'll shut up and you can leave. Here we go. You guys are terrible for my self-esteem. Can't wait to get out of here. Stop. I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Sad believing. Okay, here we go. Let's do our domain. What's the domain of A? 
remember, if you're under a radical, you must be greater than or equal to zero. So x must be bigger than or equal to three. That's your domain. Remember, if you're under a radical, you must be bigger than or equal to zero. I'm doing problem B now. I'm under a radical. I gotta be bigger than or equal to zero, so x has gotta be bigger than or equal to negative one. But this also has a denominator, so there's another piece to it. X minus two cannot be zero, which means x cannot be two. This whole thing is your answer, both parts. What about C? The domain is all real. Please tell me you got that right. It's all real. And then D, last one. X for D, X plus six cannot be zero, so X cannot be negative six because your denominator cannot be zero. Practice one and two done. Next time I see you, which, what did I say that was? Probably Monday. Monday? I see you on Monday, and we'll do practice test three, and then I don't see you until Wednesday when we will take our test. Chris, you make sure that off, please? I will. So